Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me once again for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of Misty Morning and Focus combination. You know how much I absolutely love the bergamot, that little bit of zing. Anyways guys, if you want any of these teas, go over to my site, darkmoonteas.com. You asked me for them, and they're there. Go grab them, or you can pick them up over at jcristina.com, whichever. Anyways guys, today is going to be a Nikon day, and it is a sad day for me. Um, I think competition is absolutely imperative in the photographic, video, any kind of tech market, all right? Innovation leads to innovation instead of iteration. I've said this to you guys many times in the past, and I'll keep saying it forever. Anyways, I think that today might mark the beginning of the end of Nikon. Now, that is a big statement to say, I know, but this is very similar to something that we've seen in the recent past, but I'll get to that in a moment. So after 70 years, Nikon is now going to move all of production from Japan to Thailand. That is a very sad, sad thing, but they say that it is very important for them to stay afloat. Basically, a Japanese publication, their, the name is Aerodot, I believe, and they reported that Nikon is ending all domestic camera production in Japan. Now, it says, according to the report, Nikon will be moving the camera production from the Sendai Nikon plant just north of Tokyo to Thailand in efforts to, quote, reduce costs. Reducing cost is what all of these manufacturers are trying to do now, but some of them are adamantly doing it, and Nikon is one of them. They started doing this about, eh, about October, I think it was, when they moved production already for their Nikon Z6 and their Z7 to Thailand. So we see the writing basically on the wall here, guys. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this translation up. I'm not going to read it because it's a hot mess. Whenever you deal with these translations. Sometimes it's hard to just read through them, but I'm giving you basically the gist of it. I'll throw that up so you can read it. Now, according to DP Review, I think it was like a day or two ago, they stated that the Nikon Sendai factory was like 27,000 square meters in size. That is massive and has been in production. Production has been going on there ever since their opening in 1971. I mean, you're talking about a lot of production happening in this plant, right? Now, the very first camera that was produced there, they said, was the Nikon EM, and that was in 1979. Can you imagine that, guys? 1979. Now, they also said that it housed about 400 plus employees that basically did everything from CNC machining, which is very important, to the hands-on type of construction of these cameras. But the most critical, the most crucial, and the most important, I would say, to all of us is the QC that happened there, the quality control, right? That Japanese QC has always been just second to none, and they really do a good job at making sure that the products leaving the plant, leaving the facility, are at 110%, not at 80%. Now, they have had some problems in the past. We've seen, like, for example, the D750 with one and then two and then finally three recalls before they got that camera right. That was a major blow to Nikon, all right? And at that time, I did a report on it and I said, you know, if they don't get their shit straight, they're going to be out. And I said that once the D850 comes out, if that camera has the same type of recall issues, they're going to be done because it was a really big thing. A lot of Nikon people, a lot of Nikon fans left at that time. They're like, you know, we can't deal with this recall, recall, recall stuff. So what ended up happening was, is the D850 did come out and they crushed it, thank God. All right, the D850 was unbelievable and I still stand by my guns here. I said that the D850 was the absolute best DSLR 
ever made, full frame DSLR ever made. And I believe that even to this day. And I am a Canon shooter. Like I said, I'm kind of agnostic anyways. I really am not a fanboy of any company. I really could care less. Everything has its place. Well, in my personal opinion, the place for the D850 is the best full frame DSLR ever made. That's my personal opinion. Now, DP Review also stated that Nikon's general manager came forward and what he said was this massive factory, the Sendai factory, the 27,000 meter factory was going to become a new business endeavor factory where they're going to emphasize production technology and mobility. Now, when I hear that production technology and mobility, I think of production technology of more of like assembly line stuff, okay? That's what it sounds like to me. Whereas mobility, I think of, let's say, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and anything mobile, maybe smartphones. Now, We've talked about this in the past and we've all always said that wouldn't it be cool if Canon or Nikon or some of these big manufacturers created a smartphone and maybe that's what Nikon will be doing. I really don't know, but he did emphasize the point that this production facility will be transformed into a new business endeavor location, let's say, emphasizing production technologies as well as mobility. So that is very interesting. We'll see what ends up happening with that. Now, he also indicated that all high precision parts that are required for the Nikon cameras, every single one of them will be produced in Thailand before the end of 2021. Nothing will be produced. None of those camera parts will be produced in Japan any longer. That's it. They're slowly moving everything over to Thailand. Now, I was thinking about this and I was saying, you know, to myself, well, what is the savings of doing this? What is those savings? What, how much are they going to save? Is it a little bit? Is it a lot of bit? What is it? And I took a look and I did some conversions from different currencies to US dollars to find out what is the, let's say, value of a blue collar worker in the country, right? So for example, the average amount of pay that a blue collar worker makes in the United States is about $16 an hour, close to about $40,000 a year. Whereas a blue collar worker in Japan, they make an average of $18.94 an hour. $16 for the US, $18.94 for a Japanese blue collar worker. A little bit better, almost, let's say, $3 more than the U.S. Well, how much does a blue-collar worker in Thailand make? Well, they make an average of $4.15 an hour. Holy sh**, guys. <laughs> right? I mean, well, there you have it. That is a massive savings. You're looking at about a four and a half times as much to pay someone in Japan to make the exact same product as someone in Thailand. I mean, that is a real big disparity. And now you can see why a lot of these companies are moving their production to Thailand. Their people are getting paid nothing, literally nothing. Four bucks an hour, 4.15. That's disgusting, in my personal opinion, but who knows? Maybe the cost of living is four and a half times less dear as it is here and maybe in Japan. I don't know. But either which way, you're seeing a major difference. So in comparison to almost $19 in Japan, they'll be able to pay people four bucks. But, but, and the big but here, large but. I like big butts and I cannot lie. You we saw this cannot. with Olympus. And I made this statement way back about a year and a half before Olympus ended up saying, you know what, we're selling the farm. And this is exactly what ended up happening. Olympus started moving production away from their main facility to external facilities in hopes of reducing cost. 
Whereas, yes, they reduced costs, but it still didn't help. It was like a Hail Mary. And I feel like this is very similar to what's going on here. You're talking about a company like Nikon that's been around for decades and decades. And after like 70 plus years closing up their facility for production of their high-end camera parts and moving it into anything else, something else, you know, maybe making mobile phones or who knows what, it is a major blow, a major blow. All right. And like we've already said, the Z6, as well as the Nikon Z7, has already started moving or already has been moved to Thailand. And that started in October. So, you know, I seriously hope it doesn't happen. And we see Nikon end up selling their camera business, right? And just honing in on their medical and maybe on mobile phones or on whatever. I sure as hell hope not. Because like I said at the beginning of this piece, innovation is so, so mission critical for us, for the photographers, videographers, for tech heads in general, right? Innovation is very important to us. And as the playing field becomes smaller and smaller and smaller, and there's less competition, that innovation becomes stifled and iteration becomes rampant. And we get this iterative crap year over year over year. And we just don't want to see that. We really don't want to see that. I just, you know, when I... Let's just hope it doesn't happen. But like I said with Olympus, when you see these companies really scrambling to try to save a buck, the writing is on the wall, guys. The writing is on the wall. And it is, it's really sad. It is sad. I want to know what you guys think. I might be completely wrong here. And Nikon just might pull through this without a problem like they did with their recall after recall after recall that they had with their D750 and then created a stellar D850 that just crushed it. And I hope that is exactly what ends up happening with their company. So I want to hear from you. Like I said, I want to know your thoughts. What do you think? But before we go, I want to say that if you haven't downloaded my ebook, go over to jchristina.com forward slash ebook. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash ebook, 10 tips of making tax sharp images. Go download it. It is free. Also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel and you like this content even a little bit, please think about subscribing. That would be fantastic. Also click this little bell icon right over here. So when we go live, like we just did like two days ago, when we go live, you'll be notified of it immediately. And also whenever I come out with a new video, you'll be notified of it immediately. And as you guys asked, if there was any way that you could contribute to the channel, there is a way, like I've said in the past, down below each and every video, you'll see a button that says join, click it. And for a dollar or two or whatever, you could become a member of the channel. And I try to send you guys over some perks for doing so along with a big thanks that would be fantastic and if you want to pick up any of my photography tools head over to my website jchristina.com where you can find everything that i've made over the last decade decade and a half check it out if there's something there that you like pick it up and during this season, you're going to get 30% off anything that's in your shopping cart. Doesn't matter what it is. It could be one thing or it could be five things. Once you pick it up, put it into your shopping cart. Use promo code YT30 at checkout. Once again, YT30. If you're a subscriber, you're going to get 30% off everything in your shopping cart during this season. So that's it, guys. This was Vlogmas 11. I hope you enjoyed it. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe and stay healthy.